Yo, John Fitch here. This is John Fitch knows nothing. I'm uh, still on the road, so this is this is uh, kind of like um, going back in time because this is pre-recorded. So I'm gonna have a nice little conversation uh, with Paul Benjamin, Apex Mindset, and today we're gonna talk a little bit about the fact that you don't have to pick a side, like politically, amongst other choices. It seems like you have a very limited amount of choices to make. Uh, about how to live your life and what side to be on. You know, you got to be uh, a left liberal Democrat or you have to be a conservative Republican or you have to um, chase women around all the time or you have to be virgin and marry at 18 and and um, be really religious. You know, you're, you're told that you have a certain select paths you have to take and you're bad if you don't take those paths. So we're going to talk about that with Paul today. I think we'll get some good insight and um, – I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's go here. Paul, what's hey, up, man? What's up, man? How's it going? Nothing Happy much. Here. I'm getting ready for my trip, so I'm pretty pumped about that. I just have to do some packing. Nice. But uh, I'm excited to talk talk with you. I haven't talked with you one-on-one for a while. I know, dude. It's been a little while. I haven't even been on rule zero in a while. I've just been busy on weekends, touching grass, getting busy's in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just summer stuff, right? And, uh, yeah. You know, that Saturday time slot just is harder and harder to meet uh, when the weather's nice. Yeah. Three months out of the year where I'm at, the rest, of, I can do it the rest of the time when the weather's crap out here in Michigan. Yeah, it's snowy <laughs> and freezing outside. Right, 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 yeah, right. You get that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that, that's one of the things I want to talk about today was because it, you get it all the time with Twitter and especially we're getting close to, you know, the election cycles coming up. Yeah. There's this right. big pull on like, you got to pick a side. Who mm-hmm. are you voting for? Where are you voting? Like, all the attention is pointed towards that. Oh, yeah. So um, you're in the military, all yeah. right? But you never come off to me as somebody who is politically charged either way. Right. You seem like <laughs> a very, very like independent minded person. And it seems like uh, issues mean more to you than parties. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's pretty accurate. You know, and it's, I think like (laughs) depends on what areas of the military, you know, somebody might work and, you know, people in the military are pretty politically charged. Sometimes, you know, they pick sides most of the time. Um, And it's hard to say which, you know what I mean? It was, very awkward during election time during, especially during the Obama election originally, like being overseas, you know what I mean? And stopping in at the uh, chow hall and seeing like the election results. And you see some people are super pissed and like other people like super Mm. excited. And you're just like, Oh, okay. Awkward. Get me the hell out of here. You know? Yeah. Um, But that, that happens because military people, most military people are following orders. And so yeah. they're really just, they're, fo- they, they are following, you know, their sense of purpose is dictated to them by the military and they follow mm-hmm. whatever that is. And so they tend to follow with whatever political ideology they grew up with or their social circles are, or that fits their demographic, you know, their friend circles, their social circles, whatever it may be and where they're from and all that. And they, they kind of stick to that and they're just sort of following. So when political party, uh, a conservative or political party, you know, um, liberal says a, B or C, they just kind of follow along. Yeah. That's most of the non-combat arms people, the call them the pogs, the people other than grunts, you know, um, they don't have to work. They, their, their jobs are mainly like, not much different than civilian work. You know, they're just wearing a uniform. Now mm. you start getting into closer environments, you know, more your infantry or versions of that, where, you know, people are coming together. We all have funny arguments and debates and goofy little fights over it, but nobody really cares. You know, we're just take, we, you're taking care of your guys on your team, whether they're yeah. you know, voted for at the time, let's say you know, back in those days, voted for Obama or, you know, voted for whoever else. Right. So like, it's like you're, whether they're conservative, whether they're not, whether they're you know, Trump or not, you know, whatever, you didn't care at really that much. You learn to not care. You know, it's uh, it's, it's not a like someplace like the infantry, especially it's not a place for, things like racism or divisive mm-hmm. politics because yeah. you're working so closely. And that, <clears throat> now that's more in combat. We're getting, mm-hmm. we're in a garrison 
you know, garrison meaning non-combat, you know, sort of mindset where people can be more and more divided and, you know, the system's interested yeah. in feelings and all that crap. That, <laughs> yeah. that all that BS goes away, though, when people <clears throat> are dying. So, you know, yeah. next war, next thing where we're directly involved, we, we, we might take casualties. Those things will change and shift again. Um, but, but for me too, I was doing, uh, you know, not just infantry related tasks. I was in the, you know, more or less the, you know, special operations side of things and doing intelligence, um, activities. So those types of things, you start seeing a little bit more about how ideas and thoughts are manufactured more or less, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. And so. It's kind of get to a position where you can kind of see behind the curtain a little exactly. bit more. Is that what you yeah. mean? Okay. Yeah. And, and so, and so you, you know, you realize that it's just you see how the of, sausage is made. You start to get, yeah, you start to get the idea of how the sausage is made. And, and, and it's mostly chaos, really. Like, mm. People think it's organized. Like yeah. there's an Illuminati. Not really. Mm. It's, it's, this, a, it's there's, a, there's a lot of groups who are trying to take as much advantage of situations as they can, but I don't, think, yeah. I don't think people are that organized. <laughs> no, that's the thing. That's the biggest. It's, it's a lot of chaos, even within an organization, a lot of chaos, mm -hmm. a lot of personal interests. So their, their ideologies tend to fall in line with personal interests, you know, and your liberals are just as selfishly motivated and money motivated as your conservatives oh. and vice versa. At these levels, you know what I mean. Well, you, you guys do run a like uh, you're a very special situation being in the military because regardless of political standing, like you're always going to have to follow orders, right? And that's, that's so there the, is like already an inherent like I have to detach, you know, especially if you're in for a long time, like, you have sure. to at some point have to detach from the two sides. Um, but you, we we don't have that many people in that scenario. Like yeah. most scenarios are people who are out, you know, in like the corporate world or out in the working world or out in, you know, uh, the yeah. education fields. And that's very tribal in a mm -hmm. lot of those places. Right. And there's going to be a lot of pulls towards either side, mm -hmm. which is kind of a, it's a kind of a fake. I mean, it's a fake paradigm. It's like a fake choice. It is. Because everything online, everything. Um, what I mean, not everything online, but everything like in the ma mainstream news media, mainstream media, it always picks pictures. Most things is like two sided. Yep. It's either, you know, left wing or right wing. You right. got to choose which one are you on? Which side are you on? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it is it's it's really just um, manufacturing your decisions for you by giving you the illusion of choice. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, you know, you could go with this or that. <laughs> And a lot of these things like that people are debating over and different stuff. I mean, it's, I'm not to say that they don't matter at all, but, but, a, but a large, you know, some things do definitely matter, but I'll get yeah, into what I think matters, <laughs> but it's distraction, right? That's what it's actually distracting you from what matters. Yeah. And so getting you to vote or go a particular way um, and to get really involved in some sort of debate and all that, it's really just distracting you. Um, from focusing on things that are important and that may actually impact somebody's livelihood for better or for worse if you were paying attention and 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 made those decisions and really could impact your own livelihood if you you know you had the ability to but it's people don't have the ability to really influence the system like they think they could how you influence it is really like through your 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 close circles yeah you know, your close social circles i was talking about this today with my girl like yeah the, the big picture there's not much you can do about the big picture you can't you're not you're right. not gonna do anything about trans kids no. and <clears throat> and operations no. and hormones no but you can you can be there for your kids exactly and, like, give them the attention they need and make sure that those situations don't arise because you were there for them yep that, that's something you can do Right. No, because yeah. You have to focus exactly locally on, on what's directly around you. You can't save the world. You can only save your world. Yep. Yep. And I think that it's, you know, I, I'm going to say kind of may sound extreme in saying this, but unless somebody is an actual political figure, unless somebody works 
in politics where they have an, a direct influence on things by their decisions. Billion it's main, yeah, it's mainly just it's it's a lot of people with, in my opinion, a failures mentality and mindset because they can focus mm -hmm. on stuff that they can't control, get really emotionally invested, get all the dopamine uh, in feelings of accomplishing something when they're really not accomplishing anything. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not making their lives better. They're not making lives of other people around them better. They're not making more money. They're not getting what, you know, they're not going towards any actual goals. And a lot of times they're giving themselves excuses to not go for actual goals and things because the world is so screwed up and look at this environmental issue or climate change or, you know, these oppressed people over here or whatever, mm -hmm. like they can jump on some sort of cause, feel better about themselves and, not face themselves in the mirror and their own shortcomings mm -hmm. and what they need to do to fix their own lives. I and mean, that's what I think a lot of it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> yeah. and, like you get the same. Um, yeah. Like, like it's not just, you know, political, like, although some of those things run together, but the uh, like the religious element, you know, oh, yeah. you know, you're having issues. This is the way this is go this way. Just pray harder. Right. You know, just come to church and pray harder and pulling in that. Like I have the answers. This is the way it's very similar to what a lot of uh, like the, the content guys and the uh, coaches and stuff are online. Oh, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Where's your Bugatti? Where are you have to, <laughs> you know, you have to have this many girlfriends. You have to have this many children. You have to yeah. live in this place and do these things. There, yep. There's a lot of that. Everybody. It seems like that's on majoritively what's out there is this is the way you have to do it to be successful. This is the way to be happy. Everybody else is wrong. Yep. Yeah. Well, and that's a marketing tactic, really. You know, it's it's <laughs> like you're you're miserable and unhappy person that's out there. So the key to, you know, getting out of that dissatisfaction or unhappiness is to become this archetype. You know, so if you're, you become this, and then we have like weird debates about it. Like that'll go viral. <laughs> uh, this high value man, you know, what like, high value man? what's that mean? You know, so it was, like, you become, it was like two weeks of internet create <laughs> content creation was what is high value man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And it's like, okay, but <laughs> it's, it's somebody else's programming. And so like it, I talk about this shit actually in my seduction group is so important in, in my some of my mindset work is finding your own identity independent mm -hmm. of the programming you know so because you're growing up as we grow oh, up um as children you know your your identity isn't really separate from your caregivers you know mm -hmm. so a baby like can't really separate his identity from his his mom usually and, and sometimes dad too and so that's you 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 have this identity that fits in with your caregivers for be for better or for worse and whoever those people are too because so you know broken families can create these all kinds of problems there but oh yeah you know but then you get into your teenage years and what happens there is that is teenage rebellion that's teenagers trying to separate and find their identity separate from mm -hmm. their caregivers. But what they usually end up doing is they fall into group identities, you know? So it's groups of friends or this online group or this ideology here or whatever. And this is why young, like most of you like protesting types of people are actually young, you know, disenfranchised or di you know, distraught people, right? They're, they're in their late teens, early twenties because they're still trying to find their identity, but really they think they're, you know, being special and being themselves, but really they're following another group. And because we're tribal as human beings, we, we are uh, the, the animal part of us is we're social animals. So we're tribal is this natural fall into these tribal groups and not to independently think. And so the, the key to, you know, really my opinion, like even going back a long time where people did rites of passage and different things, you know, warrior classes did their different things. It was a key. Mm -hmm. The key to it was being able to find your own identity yeah. separate from all these identity groups. And so that's where you're mm -hmm. truly unplugging from the programming of everything else, getting off of automatic and actually finding truly who you are and what it is that you want to do with your life. 
it's a challenge and people don't do yeah. it by and large, you know, I don't think they're encouraged to do it. No, you no, know? no, definitely. And, not. and it, it, was, it was really cool to hear you uh, say those things again, because that was, I had one like childhood development psychology class in college. Mm -hmm. And that was like what they explained was like the kids identity is first uh, attached to the parents. And then uh, they start to create their own identity by piecing together their favorite things of other people. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, uh, at first it's uh they start imitating the, i want to be thor i want to be the incredible hulk right, right. i want to be hulk hogan whatever right and then then they get older and it becomes they oh, want to be I red wanna have, thor. i want well no it's they get older and they're like i want i want uh the hulk strength i want yeah. captain american's leadership i want yeah you know what i mean i want black panther's big wing <laughs> well, and that's that's interesting. You know, so, me, so they start yeah. piecing things together because so they start they start uh, creating like Frankenstein their own image of their ideal self, which is a terrible. Thing, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, which they're supposed to do. It's what your natural progression is supposed to be to separate yourself mm -hmm. from your family and your parents to be your own individual. Yeah, I think nowadays a lot of it is, um, you know, conform to the group. Like we're. Right. Uh, uh, collective. That's the word mm -hmm. I was looking for. We're collective now. You're not, there's no individualism. They don't want individualism. It seems, it seems like the push is collectivism. You have to be a part of a group. Sure. Well, cause it's easier to control you and siphon money right out of your pockets, right? And keep you working for them. So that's, that's I mean, what it I think boils it's, down it's to. It's easier for people to categorize you too. when you belong yes. to a group, I think that's why often when you disagree with somebody's viewpoint, they automatically accuse you of the oppositional side. Yes. Whether or right. not you're, you're neutral from both, you can hate both sides, mm -hmm. but, but and they because, give you a bunch because of you disagreed with their one side. Yeah. Now you're a supporter of the other person. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And they, and then they put a bunch of, uh, you know, assumptions about who you are, your character, all this stuff because of a particular viewpoint, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, you know, I'll take a particular viewpoint or whatever, because maybe I don't think that, you know, men should be slaves to other people's, you know, um, goals and dreams, you know, meaning a woman. And that just thinking that, you know, is as wrong think I'm a misogynist, right? Because I'm not, we're not I'm not thinking that, mm -hmm. you know, the guy should sacrifice and self-sacrifice and himself for you know his partner's goals right yeah. right like that's yeah your belief is <laughs> do the right thing is actually the guy should do the right thing for him oh well, right right it's, of course it's a difference, you know, it's a difference in opinion we're a misogynist from, from that yeah. <laughs> we're we're thinking that, though. yes it's, you know well and that's and that's the thing too that's one one tactic with political language is that they use words that have one meaning or connotation normally but then in context of making their political argument will have another meaning entirely like, though, for example, today I, I talked about it. I'm, I know I'm late to the party on the clickbait uh, using the clickbait for, for my channel, which is probably why my channel's not big, but I, the yeah, Jonah Hill situation, I have yeah. a hard time <laughs> succumbing to the clickbait. I have a hard time succumbing, yeah. but there were some lessons on the, on the J Jonah Hill, you know, situation. I did, I did a little, uh, I did a little video on that also. Yep. Yep. So with that, just an example, using that as an example is, you know, he had boundaries and conditions and standards he would expect the mother of his child to have. And he illustrated those. Now, whether one disagrees or agrees with what those are or whether they think he, he communicated it in the right wife. way. Yeah. He had them. And just by nature of him having those, that made him abusive. So the, the, the terminology became abusive, narcissist, and misogynist were the three key words that were used by mainstream media to describe him. What is he guilty of? His guilt, you know, he was guilty of having boundaries. boundaries. <laughs> I guess that, 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 that other women. How dare not you not like something or something? Right. Yeah. No, and, and it's, it's like, like, it's like them yeah. accusing, uh, Men who don't want to sleep with trans women that have penises <laughs> as, is, as somehow bad people. This is a California thing for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, but yeah, no, exactly. Well, exactly. Like I'm a, I'm a trans phobe if I wouldn't have sex with a trans person, according to some people. Right. So it's like, but they're using words or terms 
to mean things. And it's really deceptive, actually, mm -hmm. like the, to call somebody because I got let's say you get in, you know, guy gets into argument with girl or something and he says, you know, I don't I don't like your behavior. I think it's bullshit. And if you're going to act like that, then we're not in a relationship. Let's say that's a big, mean text. You know, he can be presented as abusive abusive now i know women who've had to flee a home situation with whatever they could grab do it on a spontaneous level so that they wouldn't get caught go hide someplace else and basically off grid themselves to get away from a physically Mm. abusive partner that would actually harm them or potentially kill them. I know women mm. who've been in that situation. I would consider that guy abusive. I wouldn't cons you see the difference though in language yeah. here, like that to mm. me is abusive and that to everybody else is abusive too. But then they use the same word to describe a guy who said a mean thing or had a boundary and put it in a text, you see. And so this is how they use language to try to shame or dissuade your opinion, you know? So it's like, we're going to any guy who sets any sort of boundary whatsoever isn't a true feminist, you know? So he is an abuser. He's abusive. He's narcissistic. He's misogynist. It, it, a misogynist is a really strong word. I mean, that's a guy who, who literally hates literally women. hates women. Yeah, 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 right? And so like but that how often does that word expanded now to mean anything that that the op opposition or opposing opinions doesn't like. Uh mm -hmm. the left is really good at that. I'm not trying to be make this a politically charged thing. It's just that is truly something that they're really good at for for I would say I mean it works unfortunately. You know, it really does and and they got I I mean they got you know, Trump out of office with that kind of stuff. Mm. It's just by expanding definitions, you know, not that Trump helped himself. <laughs> he not, you know, he, you know, he, his, he helped it a, a lot of that mm. stuff along sometimes, but that's something that, I mean, they, they've written about that in strategies. It's just something that's there, but both sides do use it. Just the left is just better at it, you know, where yeah. they'll take a word and expand it. And so you got to look for that stuff. You Change, know what always I mean? changing meanings. If it's a, yeah, it's a communist the communist method yeah oh no it really is it really is it's a way of you know manufacturing your ideas and I, that's kind of my feeling though is that um in the same way the right and left are actually the same the, to me they're actually the same wing of feminism i, I think because they <laughs> right both now, yeah they, they right both now. act they both act and do things that are communist mm -hmm. and, and inherently communism kind of is like a feminist thing Right. It's collectivism. It's it's, you know, we have to take care of everybody. Every, you know, the, the strong have to work to take care of the weak. Yeah. You know, and. Uh, right. I, and I see the point. I mean, some people may like like political arguing type people will try to pick a, apart the definitions of communism this and that. But your yeah. points like that's just bullshit and semantics your point is actually really valid there because there's it's no like, individualism there there's no individualism uh, preached on either side right and, you and have to join the collective on either side right and, and what it is 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 a you know i mean i hate to say every see everything through like a a gendered lens but there is an element right now or a push towards gynocentric or femme centered control as well as uh, safety net and charity. It's like, it's an interesting combination of both because it's long house, it's long house. <laughs> yeah. It's bonobos. That's <laughs> like bonobo apes, man. You know, <laughs> like it's, it's like it's guys are, you know, are taken out of positions of control, but also taken out of positions of social safety and security. And so you see both sides with that. Like, so the conservatives, tend to fall more in the line of a religious conservative traditional role where they go, well, we take care of the women in the way that you would in a traditional, let's say Christian or Jewish or Muslim family where the guy is the worker, the provider, they take care of everything guy. But the problem is the balance of that guy being in charge and having masculine leadership 
has been taken out or taken away. The guy, a lot of the language, when you look at language from traditional conservatism, it's the guy is serving his wife, serving his family. And it's not that that is a bad concept, but it, it's the way back to language again. What does serving mean? It means where he has to appease to her needs, goals, wants, desires. And if she's unhappy or unsatisfied in any of those, that becomes his responsibility to work to make those things happen. Fix when, it. When did that when did that start happening? Because that wasn't the initial intent. <laughs> it was not. Religion, you know, like when when did they start squeezing that in there? Yeah. And that's I'm I'm not really up like sure, yeah. but it, it's an it's a fe, it's feminism in the, in the, last, feminism in the last 40 years, built. probably. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because what what happens is okay, Christianity starts losing popularity. People stop going to church. People stop paying dues. All that stuff. So they got to market themselves, right? It's and so then you get it's too tough. The rules are too strict. <laughs> yeah, right. right. And so as people move away, there's a way of mar they want they have to market themselves without you know being non Christian in their way. And there are values that you know, you know, caretaking for women is a value that's there, but again, it's caretaking from a role of being a leader. And so what the, but being this, the, the leader part, that is not good marketing <laughs> for strong, independent women and all this stuff. Right. So they remove that and it becomes women in dresses and, you know, tr you know, and, and sun hats running the, the show, you know, and telling husband what to do, give him his honey do list. And, you know, oh, well, you know, you got to you better. You can't go golfing Sunday. You better do the lawn. Like, you know? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's on the, the left or the right. You still have Peter Griffin's and Homer Simpson's as the husbands. Yeah. Right. And that's what they, they visualize and they make these guys fall into that frame. Cause see the stronger, the stronger frame wins. Oh, my camera. I lost you. I can't. That's all right. I can hear you. So your audio is good. <laughs> yeah, it's my camera acts up sometimes. Yeah, right on. Well, I'll just keep talking. It's not a big deal. We can still hear you. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, you know, these. Hey, there you are. Hey. Yeah. Might have <laughs> just been hot. We'll see. Oh, oh no. Damn, all damn, right. Well, I blame California infrastructure. Yeah. This. Just, yeah. <laughs> here's the camera. Here's the camera. It's you know what it's the Democrats, dude. I think it's Hunter yeah. Biden. All right, <laughs> let's blame him. That's about. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, man. It's so it's it's they've you know they've twisted the conservative message, and you can see it everywhere. It's like the crazy shit from you know the traditional conservative parts of like Twitter and social media, where it's uh, ooh, we lost John too. Yeah. No, I got oh, you. No, you're good. I was just giving you the screen for a second. I'm gonna let the oh, camera nice. charge. Go ahead and finish. Oh yeah, right on, dude. But um, but yeah. So I mean, you see this. You know, you see this going on. It's it's the loss of male leadership. It's all the elements that were great for women, which was being you know being taken care of financially and being taken care of in in certain ways, um, and enabled to raise a family and some of these things. Um, those are you know a lot of things that were pro women there that were there originally uh, with traditional conservatives, but then it altered into, you know, men losing the leadership role. So now if a guy is, has all of the responsibility of taking care of his traditional conservative Christian, Jewish, or Muslim wife, but none of the authority of the household, what is that? That's the definition of slavery. And so it's become a place where men, from the conservative side are enslaved to this ideal of taking care of her. But if you execute any authority like mm -hmm. Jonah Hill did, you know, gosh, he had a boundary. You're a monster. And, right. You're a monster. Right. And, and you're, How you're dare you. Yeah. Yep. And so that's, and that's what happens. And then on the left side of things, you know, it's male authority isn't there. And now it's more a position of like presenting this equality but equality really means the woman is in charge because yeah. you have to appease and placate to her sensibilities in order for everything to be okay and good. There is no, you know, following the leadership of the male in the relationship, even if sometimes 
you know, it doesn't always but feel great to do it's that. Kind of like uh, they want equality, but it's the man has to like step himself down <laughs> in his performance. Yes. So that she can equal it. Right. So it's not really helping him out. Not really helping <laughs> anybody out. Right. Well, and it's an assumption of it's an assumption of equality in a power dynamic, which is, you know, really interesting because, you know, that's you can even see like in, you know, how they, they look at and approach um, relationships and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And like what is considered, you know, healthy, you know, you can see where this sort of liberal, you know, equality speak shows up so if you're looking at like for example um what whether it's psychology counseling or social working world what they would consider the three pillars of a healthy relationship and it'll be some version of this it'll be some version of um community it'll be like communication um compromise will be in there and trust you know and so that'll be like their their mixture and it sounds good you know communication compromise and trust but that's, the problem does sound counterintuitive if you if you have some red pill knowledge <laughs> right to you and i because we, one, don't, we see the red flag one communication right. there's two things with communication one if you do tell women too much they'll get turned off right uh two there's no communication without comprehension so sometimes you're just talking to a wall right Right. Um, oh, I forgot. What was the other two you, you mentioned? Yeah, it was a uh, it was a uh, communication compromise. Compromise. Yeah. So trust. if you're compromising, you're giving you it's a death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, exactly. Right? You're losing frames. Right. Yep. So that's 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 not a good thing. And what right. was the last one? Um. Yeah. So again, three were communication, compromise, and trust. And that trust. Now, that's here's trust. the thing. If she yes. trusts you too much, there's no dread. That could be bad too. Well. In, in, yeah. Well, and it's like, what kind of trust are we talking about? So I have different three pillars here, you know, and mine is so it, it, because the problems are that they're approaching relationships. This is where it's the liberal spin of it is they're approaching relationships from a position of equality. Yeah. That two people are equal uh, partners coming into this situation. Reality is it's, it, and it's almost like it's a business deal. Like if, you know, you and I were going into business together, you know, we would have, you know, maybe drop a contract of some sort. We'd have compromise, you know, maybe in some ways, like I'd be like, oh, OK, I see, you know, you're, you know, I, you want this and I want that. And so we compromise things. We might give up a little something to get something. Think of it like a real estate, you know, contract or something. You're mm -hmm. selling a property. I'm buying a property or whatever. And so we kind of hash this stuff out. And yeah, sure. Two, two equal players and, and even then there's not really equal you're just you're contractually equal but the reality is if you have a a a really strong valuable piece of property that a lot of people want you have a stronger negotiating position so i may have to give up more pay more right and so like there really isn't even equality in business deals either but you want to start from an equal playing field when it comes to the contract and then they take that idea and they it's implemented into relationships. Really, we look at relationship communication, and it's and it's completely wrong. It's completely BS. But that's what gets put. That equality false narrative is what's put out usually more by the left. And in the right says, well, yeah, you know, it's it's. See, even the right now is saying that it's this equality. Like men and women are. The right will say men and women are different, but equal. And yeah. the left will just say, well, no, they're not even different. You know, they're just equal. And if you say mm -hmm. anything to imply differences, it's offensive to some people. Yeah, I, there's, there's, there's clear definitions of men and women's roles in the Bible, too. And there's yeah. you know, really devout <clears throat> Christians and Catholics who will ignore what the Bible says about the relationships because they're, they're stuck on this, you know, we're equal stuff. Yeah, well, right. And so, and that is a recipe for disaster, you know, e equal relationship, the way we're evolutionarily designed, really if approaching it from a, sta a standpoint of, oh, we're both equals here and we're going to negotiate and compromise actually puts the woman in charge. The reason why is because the guy's, it, his instinctual imperative is to take care of the baby maker. Mm -hmm. And so he will default 
to her needs, wants, and desires in a equal partness, this equal model, because his instinct's going to be to want to take care of her and the baby maker. And what that does then is he ends up being a slave essentially to her needs, wants, goals, and mainly her emotions, how she feels. So she feels like something's a bad idea. He has to do whatever she says. And it puts her empowered and control. Happy life, happy life. Right. Yeah. Well, the problem with that is, though, I is that thing for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how that ends. Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, you know, and the problem with that is bad deal for women because what they don't understand is they lose attraction for that guy and they don't trust that guy and they don't feel safe. And so they end up having this relationship where they're miserable, lost attraction for their partner, and they don't understand why or how that happened because they follow mm. the, the model that everyone told them to follow. It's not even like women are bad and it's their fault. No. It's like guys and girls are following this model, right? And it's being, it's being, broken. Pushed. it's a broken model. You have bad directions. Yep. And it's being put through the, the same model is put through in different ways, in different ideology from left and from right. And that's the, the, the thing about it. Like what you're saying, it's like, it's really not, if you're following these ideologies, it's not really a choice. The trad con one makes you feel like you're doing something different because, well, men and women are, you know, different and, you know, we better have different bathrooms or some shit or whatever, you know, <laughs> like whatever their fucking thing is. But then they're like, you know, when it comes to the yeah, relationship, we need different bathrooms, but <laughs> I got to ask my wife permission to spend my own Can money. I use it? <laughs> is that one clean or is yeah. that for guests? You know, like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, that's how they approach. They approach it with the same putting her in charge and serving her needs in a way that is more slave than leader, they that's the that's what they end up doing, which is where the left ends up at blatantly as well when they consider that well genders aren't a thing and we can decide what we want, but <laughs> we have to compromise and we're equals. Well, again, the guy's going to always default to her emotions, her sensibility. And so it's a loss of leadership, you know. And um I, I did you so you still got your audio? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay, cool. It's, it's, I, I think it's because the garage is hot. Because I actually I have I have half my bars on my battery. Oh yeah, but, yeah. But the, it's 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 significant. Oh, you're warm heating up the over garage. there in Cali. Yeah. So. Damn, dude. <laughs> That's, yeah. all right. Techno That's right. Technology doesn't like the scorching California desert. Weather. Technology doesn't like me either. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, so so my pillars like to, it different just for sake of discussion is the pillars that I have. Our desire is number is one thing, which is based on attractive behaviors from either side. And those are going to be different behaviors. You know, a girl's going to behave differently than the guy is yeah. uh, for it to be attracted to, you know, the other. And then it's trust. But trust is based on both competence and communication. Mm. So it's not just like, oh, like blind trust. Like, well, where does trust come from? A woman trusts hey. a guy. I would think trust comes a little bit from behavior. Well, right. Watching so her it, behavior. Yeah. And so we, we trust her by how she acts and behaves and shows up. Right. Mm. She trusts us the same way, but also really through our competence. Like mm. when they, yeah. when she sees that we get shit done and some of that means that we don't listen to her. Sometimes we have to be like, <laughs> you know, like, it's okay no, to make woman mad. We're not doing it that way or whatever. I hear, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I know what I'm doing. Have a seat. Right. And we are getting it. We are getting it done when we get things done and we're competent. We demonstrate competency, which is why confidence is so attractive because confidence is a emotion or display of competency. That's where trust is built. She doesn't trust a guy that always tells the truth no matter what but doesn't have any competency and is placating to her feelings. She actually doesn't trust that guy. She trusts the guy who's competent and who will tell her no. Even if that guy isn't always telling her everything, you know, and all the information or whatever. I mean, if she's li if he's blatantly lying to her and, and stuff, that's problematic. But if he's just like, like not, you know, if he's in con even controlling some of the information, not suggesting that 
that's what mm -hmm. a guy should do. But I'm just using this as an example. Mm -hmm. If he's can, you know, not providing all the information in a way, omitting some things, and she doesn't know the whole truth, but he's competent and he gets mm -hmm. it done and he and, and she gets to her goals. If he can make things happen if she can rely right. on you to she'll trust the guy who you know, actually lies to her. Things he's got paid. He planned the trip, he planned the trip, yeah. everything went off on him. She didn't have to lift the finger. That's like, oh wow, he can handle things. Yeah. Yep, right. exactly. Exactly. And so, and so it's, it's, you know, desire because they ignore desire in these models as if, well, it, it's all transactional relationships. It's how they think of things. They don't think about the desire component, which is really the only component that's going to make it last mm -hmm. over time. Trust. It's they don't think about a logical component. That's what I notice over and over and over again. People want to ignore the biological, like I'm not an animal. I don't have to answer to my biology, but like you, you, if you don't recognize that it's there, yeah. you do end up a answering to it. You end up being a slave to it. If you don't recognize that it you're does aware, influence yeah. your feelings and your choices. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. If you're not aware of your biology, biological drives, and if you don't face those things, you will be a slave to it. You will succumb to them most likely. And, um, well, and so the third element or third pillar is something I, you know, I call power exchange. So this is where it's direct violation of mainstream thinking instead of equality. No, it's a power exchange. And, and I define that really as good leader and good subordinate behaviors, you know? So the guy is leading the relationship. The woman is giving up some of her decision-making power voluntarily to him because of her trust for mm -hmm. in, in respect for his competency and his abilities. And in turn, she's becoming a support mechanism for him. He is the, it doesn't mean she never makes any decisions or doesn't have input, but it just means that he ultimately is the authority and he's responsible too. So he has a responsibility, but he has the authority and that's, what's called a power exchange. She has to give up some power in order to receive being taken care of. And that exchange is what's going to build a healthy relationship. This idea of equality is absolute nonsense and it causes relationships to fail. As we can see, both the left and the right are promoting the same idea in different ways. And that that's so relating it back to the original reason why we got here in this topic. It's like, yeah, like you think you're doing something different because you're following some ideological narrative, right? Oh, yep. well, I'm a traditional conservative. I go to church team. or. Yeah, yeah, you know, where I'm like you join the frat. <laughs> you got to college, you join the frat. Like, right. no man, just jump around the house parties. Like, be yourself. Just be your own individual. Yeah, <laughs> you got way it. more fun. Yeah. <laughs> way more fun. You can, you can move a lot, a lot, a lot freer. But and that's what it really comes down to, right? And that's the whole thing. That's why I like working with you guys from Rule Zero because we're all on the same page around. Um, your own uh, personal, uh, you know, yeah, where you're going, origin, what right? personal, uh, I just, I forgot the mental point of origin, mental right? point of origin. Yeah. Your yeah, own yeah. personal mental point of origin. Like how does this affect me? What do I want to do with my life? How do I want to live my life? What, what do I value? Right. And our, um, our, val our validation is internal. Mm -hmm. We've internalized our validation. Yeah. Well, like I like you, I respect you, but if you don't like how I live my life, I don't really care. Yeah. And I know yeah. it's the same thing for you. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do with everything we're trying to teach and give people. Is right. You can do it your way. These are just tools. Oh yeah. And it's, it's great. Like one thing to give, uh, give props to uh Rolo Tomasi here on, on his, First book, nine rules, the first rule of being on your own mental point of origin. Um, it was like I was I was understanding of uh, of these things already by the time I got a hold of his book. I was already mm -hmm. doing my own thing, but he articulated that so well for dudes who are trapped, like guys who get trapped in the social programming about relationships and how they should interact with women. Mm -hmm. Like this idea, yes, of honestly, being... even living your own life. Because yeah. I, yeah. I, I can say I've always like I was I was a pistol. That's what I was told when I was a little kid. Right. Yeah. I was always going my own way. Always. I always went against what everybody else was doing. Like I was always not. But I was guilted and I was punished and I was always told and put in the corner as I was the bad one and wrong. Yeah. Because I was doing that, mm -hmm. you know, and then. At some point in my age, I got tired of it. I was like, ah, I don't give a cap what you think. 
And then it put things into perspective when I started, you know, reading, reading Rollo's stuff and understanding like, oh yeah, there is nothing wrong with me choosing to live my life the way I want to. Like, I don't have to feel guilty that I'm not serving other people. Yeah, for sure. And it was, it's, that's one, like if guys miss a lot about that book, like I still, I recommend that first one to dudes who like never heard of any of this shit. And it's like, you know, th if they can follow that, at least as, as advice, like, you know what I need to do, I need to figure out it, ca it causes a chain reaction of so many things. Number one is figuring out who they are. Like, that's a big one. Like if you're like, I gotta be on my own mental point of origin. Then it's like, well, what does that mean? Well, that means I have to do what's for me. Well, what does that mean? Well, shit, I, I need to know what I want now. Well, what do I want? Well, fuck, I better figure out who I am to know what I'm going to want yeah. to know what direction oh, I should go. it's like a, yeah, it's like this, it's a snowball effect of things that will cause a guy to kind of unplug from pro some programming and really figure out who he is. And that's the, to me, like that whole idea of being alpha or masculine, that is the origin of it right there. If a guy can start asking him this question, like, you know, who am I really like, what really drives me? What makes me happy? What, what is it I want to do in life? And let me look at that separately from everyone else telling me what I should do. And then I start, mm -hmm. you know, coming up with my goals and think making decisions towards that. And now I'm on my own mental point of origin. And then if I have a girl in my life, she's got to come into this program that puts me in a leadership position now and ultimately put, I mean, he may lose the frame without the skills, but it puts him in the frame uh, in the beginning. Cause he's knows a good starting where point. he's going. Right. And then the girl yeah. trusts him more because he's showing competency. He knows where he's going. She's like, well, shit, this guy knows where he's going. Dude, these guys today have no clue what they're, where they're going, what they're doing. You know, they're, they have no mm -hmm. drive, no motivation and women mm -hmm. are disgusted by them. And then, and, and it's like, if they would just follow this or, or they become a good prisoner, you know, like yeah. those are the choices that women are stuck with. They don't even know like what it would feel like to be with a masculine guy. Most of these women. And so no, they're, they're starving for it. Yeah. Yeah. And so if a guy would just follow rule number one, which we're all doing, like uh, I mean, that's a good, good point about like rule zero is I love getting on there regardless of anything like we're doing, like it's fun for me because it's a bunch of people yeah. doing, we have some similar thoughts and viewpoints because we've all unplugged in our own ways. Mm -hmm. I think it's what it boils down to. Like each one of us unplugged in a different way. Your kind of unplugging was different than mine was different than Ryan's or Rolos mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, you know, podcast, Paul or Troy, like we all unplugged in these different ways. And then we're like, so we have differences, but we, we also see some things in the same way too. And it's really a fun, you know, show to get, to get on, you know what I mean? And then you have like, you know, similar, but different opinions. It's just, it's, it's good. You know, yeah. and it's a demonstration of what dudes should be doing, honestly, which is getting on their mental point of origin, figuring yep. out who they are, what they need to do. Figure yeah. out what you want to do, who you want to be, and then get to work. If you're oh, yeah, you get there. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of things online that can show you how to get to get to places. So oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, we got to be aware too um, about the people telling you the way to do things because that's you know I've read a lot of like marketing and advertising whatever books over the past like five years. Yeah, and that's one of the pronounced things, right? In online internet marketing today, the model is the same as the model for creating a cult. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, some of the things are pretty similar. It's There's like you start with a charismatic leader, you create a problem that only you can solve. Yeah. You create an out group that is your enemy and you have to attack all the time. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What, it's that, crazy. what does that sound like? Those, those are that's a cult. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it's 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 a lot of uh the sim similar elements, which is and that's the griff now, and that's what the manosphere and I'll say red pill too, because it's not it's lumped in now, right? Like there mm. is no red pill membership it's all there's no integrity with that those titles right i mean rollo's red pill isn't the same as like grifter dudes you know dating coach guy yeah, whatever separate, red pill yeah. right like they're not the same anymore but um you know and the outsiders will try to lump it all together but i mean really it's a lot of now hyper grifting dude where it's like I, my, my archetype or my model of whatever it means to be an alpha man, guy, masculine. This is the answer to all of these problems that 
you know, uh, you have and all the misery, yep. you feel pain, but let me manufacture what those problems attention, are. Man. Sun yeah. your balls, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. Eat it's all this liver shit. and testicles. Right. Yeah. And it's way. not, and it's not And I, I, I mean, I do coach guys. Right. But I mean, and, and I, but I try to, I focus on what makes you and I both different in, in a sense. You're very different. Obviously you're, we're coaching specific skills, so I don't look at, I'm not like, try to be like me, you know, yeah. I'm like, like, here's a bunch of skills on human behavior, human psychology, and figuring out, you know, your own performance psychology, and also then relationship dynamics pick up and, and all those things. Right. So here's the skill set. You're doing a bunch of skills and how to beat the crap out of people. And so whatever that format is, but it's a skill set. And in, as a fighter and who's, who coaches fighters, you're not like be my, be just like me mm-hmm. necessarily. You're like, here's the skills and now develop the skills yeah. and that, and that's the difference. And I, I think what separates the grifters from not grifters is, is the guys who are not grifters are saying, here's the material, here's the skill sets. Now develop yourself with these skill sets. And I I'm here to help you not, you know, be like me. I'm the person that you need to aspire to be like. I think that's the difference is that is propping up, you know, an image to be like, and then creating all these false problems or it would be what the grifters do or or is we're, we're just saying, okay, you have some problems to solve here. We have solutions, skill sets for you to learn, to train tools, man, tools, right. And and, and you use them as, as you need to use them, right. To be successful. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that's important, (laughs) you know, differentiate that, but definitely it's like, nobody really has the answer. You got to figure out the answer for yourself. Indeed. Indeed. You You got to take responsibility for your life. You can't, if you're just like waiting for somebody else to tell you what to do, man, I'm sorry. Life's just going to happen to you. And a lot 100%. of bad shit, a lot of bad shit, a lot of uncomfortable shit, a lot of shit you don't want to happen. It's just going to happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Right. Well, on that note, on my time, I don't know when this will air, but I got two minutes and I got to jump on a conference call. So I got to let All you right, know. Man. Yeah. So we're, we're good. You got anything uh, you want to you want to pitch real quick? Not really. I mean, you know, I got I wrote in the thing in my little apex mindset dot net. Go to the website, you know all guys could do really if they want to do anything is do all the free stuff, go subscribe to the channel. Cause I don't have, you know, I, I don't I get a ton of, of reach, stuff. you know, I get a, I get a lot of censorship. So go, go subscribe and, and get some free content that'll help you. Also, you know, somewhere on any of my videos, I got a, a link to a free newsletter so I can talk about things more frankly away from censorship that's helpful too. And I give the skills out for free that way. If any, if you guys on your channel, just do that much. That's good. You know? Awesome. Thanks a lot for coming on, Paul. It was great having you. And dude, uh, always a pleasure, man. Always you pleasure. You gotta hang home. out soon, man. Yeah. Got a lot out of this. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, we'll check you. I'll check you later guys. Thanks for watching. All right, John later. <laughs>